Yeah. The Bengals will go to the playoffs this year. And the way the Steelers are acting, the Bengals might win the division. No, 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 just no, 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 remember no, no, I told you this. Retract that. I just don't want you to have to regret saying anything. No, I, I'm just not, spin that one back. If that happens, I just made a bad assumption. The Bengals are going to be good this year. All right, let's bring him on. My guy, TJ Hushmanzada. They're 2-0. and For the record, they're not only 2-0, and they have gone on the road to beat Andrew Luck. And last night, they beat up on Joe Flacco. Now, let me push back. You were in this league a long time. Flacco's got two rookie tight ends, short week, and three new receivers. If you look at the box score, Baltimore was fine. Where they weren't fine is routes, timing, Flacco, balls thrown behind guys. Some of this to me is Flacco's got five new targets on a short week, week two. I think Baltimore in four, six, seven weeks is a really good football team. You know what I always tell people? What? Excuses only satisfy those who make them. Oh, that stings. But I will give you its rookie <laughs> quarterbacks and, and young receivers. And, yeah. But you have the entire offseason. You have training camp. They're on the same page. I, I didn't. Baltimore didn't play bad last no, night. No, Flacco no. made a couple of bad. The interception of Jesse Bates, it was cover three. He thought the safety was going to stay deep on a deep post. He had the deep crossing route, and the safety baited him. He stayed yeah. deep, and then he came down last minute. It wasn't a bad read, per se. I thought Jesse Bates, the rookie safety, I thought he made a really good play. He baited Flacco into the throw. So take, um, you know, Denver, for instance, has always been good in the first couple of weeks of the year at home because – Teams aren't in elite shape, and they have an altitude issue. So, Balt, like, Denver, first two weeks of the year at home, if you have to go to Denver historically, good luck. High altitude, it's early out of camp. Many guys are not in their best shape. There are certain things that happen weeks one and two I always keep my eye on. So, when you look at week one, two, go back to your career. You're heading into week two. Are you in great shape? Do you have the playbook totally down? What do you feel great about? Week two, how is it different than week 10, week 12? You know, for me, the difference was once you get to the middle of the season, you start anticipating play calls in the huddle. You down a distance, you start to anticipate what's going to be called. You anticipate, you just have a better feel for your the offense. coaching, the rhythm. Much more. Is it, you almost anticipate everything that's going to happen because you prepared so much and you kind of get used to the preparation aspect of it of, okay, this is what we're going to do. Oh, okay, this is what they're going to do. And, and so the comfort level is much higher. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, off, it's hard enough to get a rhythm in the NFL on offense. And offense is about choreography and a rhythm. Defensive guys just blow stuff up. I'm a defensive guy. I'm trying to blow stuff up. But offensive guys, you guys have to memorize playbooks. You guys have bigger playbooks than defense. You guys have to get into a rhythm. I watched Joe Flacco play. And like six times last night, in the middle of a drive, let's throw Lamar Jackson in there. And I'm thinking, now come on now. You're just trying to validate your pick. And I got nothing against Lamar. But if you're going to use him, by the way, two-point conversions after the touchdown, 11 on 11, use him. To insert him in the middle of drives, if you were a quarterback, would you like that? I'm sure it pissed Flacco off. I, I know, Joe. I used to sit up at the facility with Joe, and we'd play cornhole all damn night. Yeah. Like, we'd been... I'm sure it really irritated him, but this is what they – I didn't think it was effective. It, it wasn't effective. It, they, it was second and 20, and I believe they got like a 15-yard run on one of the plays where Lamar Jackson was in. But outside of that one play, it was not effective. I'm, I'm almost certain Joe does not like it. But Flacco has brought this on himself by not playing well in years past. So it's almost like – why, why cry about it now? If I hadn't been playing well, they wouldn't have drafted Lamar Jackson. Yeah, because they had other needs. They could have used a tight end. They could have used a, a, a receiver. They have two rookie tight ends. So, to me, it feels like they're validating. The, remember when the Jets acquired Tebow, and they were always trying to figure out how to use Tebow, and you're like, you already have a young quarterback who's struggling to get into rhythm, Mark Sanchez. Like, like Mark, don't pull Sanchez out in the middle of a drive to put in Tebow. Yeah, I, I know. You, you can just... Watching the game, right. just look at Joe Flacco's stance <laughs> as a receiver. It tells you all you need to know. He's pissed. He does not – like, he just stands there like, what why a, are we doing this? Why are we doing this? You, you just look at his stance. He, he does not like it at all. So, I was saying this about Kirk Cousins. There were two games. I think Kirk Cousins is a real solid quarterback. Solid. Not, not special, but solid. Agree. You're not going to roll around like Russell Wilson. You're not going to have the arm of Carson Wentz. But you win games with him. But there were two games – in Washington that the front office watched and they bailed on him. 
home playoff game against Green Bay. Couldn't get it in the end zone. Field goal, field goal, field goal. One for four in the red zone. Aaron Rodgers looked great. He looked average. Then they had a week 17 game, the boat year with the New York Giants, where the Giants were already in. Redskins had everything to play for, and they laid a complete egg, and and he wasn't any good. And I believe those two performances, the front office in Washington said, TJ, he's just not the guy. He's just he's a, a guy, not the guy. So when they paid him all that money in Minnesota and got rid of Teddy Bridgewater, who can play, and Case Keenum, who won 13 games, they got him for this weekend. Aaron Rodgers hasn't practiced. Devontae Adams hasn't practiced. Minnesota clearly has the better defense. Didn't they pay him for this game? Minnesota should win this game this weekend. They they Number one, like, Zimmer is very underrated as a coach, number one. You had him, didn't you? In Cincinnati a year, and he immediately our defense jumped and was was drastically better. They Defensively, this is the best team he's ever played on, Kirk Cousins, defensively. You got Diggs as a receiver. You got Rudolph as a tight end. You got Thielen as a receiver, and you got um, Dalvin, Dalvin Cook. Cook as a— so his offensive skilled players are also really good. You may never in your – you know what it reminds me of? Remember Andy Dalton broke into this league and he had – A.J. Green, Sanu, Marvin Jones. Good backs. And then he had a good tight end from Oklahoma. Uh, Jermaine Gresham. Jermaine Gresham. Then they got Eifert. Andy Dalton walked into this offense with all these guys. You're like, yeah, you, you may never have an offense like that again. Kirk Cousins may never have an offense this loaded. He ha- – it's not even all – his defense – is so sound like they're good at every level they're good at the d-line they're good at the linebacker spot and best good safety in the, in the game maybe and, and so i mean they got what three first round corners in Rhodes, trey waynes uh i forget the other guy's name defensively minnesota i i honestly whether aaron rod they're, they're they're winning the game whether aaron Rodgers plays or not i see minnesota winning the game they're that good defensively but if kirk cousins can't beat aaron this week that he didn't practice and his number one receiver didn't practice i don't think it matters that he didn't practice i think it matters more so that he's hurt if you Fair. can't win now you're never gonna win okay uh uh tj hushmanzada is joining us so it's funny uh, the jags play the patriots and i've always had this fe- you'll know this well is that I've always had this feeling like emotional teams, Seahawks, Steelers, play better at home. Like the New England, if you're in, here's some teams I think are unemotional, New England. Home and away, same team. Um, Rams with Sean McVay. Last year, they were actually better on the road. But when you get young teams and emotional teams, like you watch them at home and away, they're a different team at home. Jacksonville is young and they're cocky and they yap, 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 yap. And I think this is their Super Bowl. I think they have circled the wagons all off season. Week one didn't matter. It's New England's coming to our place. Brady's coming to our place. I think Jacksonville is gonna could lay it on them. It's gonna this game. I'm looking forward to this. When you've played in Jacksonville, you haven't been a good team, and so last year was a surprise to many. And so they want to show everybody that we can play. And they did that on the field, but they're going to talk. Football is a game of emotion. Like for people that it's super emotional. I played with a lot of emotion. You played on a Bengals team that led the league in emotion. If there was a stat, you led it for but like it's five al- years. You ha- it's almost like you have to prove a point. You have to prove a point like we can play too. And I'm going to get you by saying it, but we got to back that up as well. If you li- If Blake Bortles can be remotely good, Jacksonville is going to win this game. You just don't know what Blake Bortles is going to give you. I mean, New England is good because they have 12. As long as, long as he's back there, they're, 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 they're going to be fine. But his skill, I mean, outside of Gronkowski. First of all, New England's running backs are all dinged up. Now, now Jeremy Hill's out for the year. Burkhead's hurt. Concussion. Pro- so, New England's got issues on the perimeter where Jacksonville, by the way, is loaded at corner. New England has always done a great job of scheming you with, with their slot receivers and whatnot and just getting easy. Their, their short passing game is like a running game for them. Yeah. But Jacksonville, they can – me personally, I'm having Jalen Ramsey follow Gronkowski around the field the entire game. Yes. Him or Bo- you, you have to. You if have you take Gronk out. You, you have to now – they do have Miles Jacks, who's a really great athletic linebacker, but I, 
you have to put Jalen Ramsey on Gronkowski the entire game, whether it's man or zone. You, you just have to shadow him so that you don't give away the coverage. By the way, there's, a, there's an analytic stat out there that if you look at Gronk's history against safeties and linebackers, he eats them alive. But Gronk's numbers come down against corners. And the elite corners, his numbers come way down. So if you're an analytics guy, Jacksonville probably puts Ramsey, to your point. I mean, he's 6'2", he's over 200 pounds. By the way, they, didn't they put run. him on it last year? He, and he shut him down. But the, he came out, Gronk then played the second half of the hurt. game. Yeah. All right, TJ. It's great seeing you. This is a very, very interesting week two in the NFL. Blazing five in 20 minutes from now off a winning week. TJ Hushman's auto. Anything Thank else? You That's it? No, you, know, you know what else? What? Tell everybody, don't get too excited about Sam Darnold. Because remember how we <laughs> put uh, Dak Prescott up here? Now everybody's saying, oh, Dak might not be that Sam good. Sam Darnold's his... better than... No, 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 no. I'm not saying he's not better. I'm saying it's just one game. It's just one game. Because after one season, Dak Prescott was on cloud nine. Now it's like... Yeah, but Dak Prescott had a line. Dez, Witten, Zeke. Darnold's dealing with end tables okay, here. Okay, what, what does Dak Prescott have now? His line, the main piece of his line is hurt. He doesn't have it. What, yeah, you, but and you Dak cut, come back down to earth. You cut Dez Bryant, and it's like, ah, oh, they're not playing cloud coverage anymore. They got that safety support in the box. They didn't take that into account. That's you, don't, all. you don't think Darnold's significantly better than Dak as a talent? I'm not. Obviously, everybody believes so because of his draft status. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying what is. What do your eyes tell you? I like Sam Darnold. I don't like his. He throws too many interceptions. That's the only thing. He has a tendency to turn the ball over a little bit too much. Um, I played under Jeremy Bates for one offseason in Seattle. He did a great job with the scheming and his play calling to kind of get Sam Darnold in a rhythm. But I'm just saying it, it was just one game. I would like to see how he does the rest of the season. If he goes 2-0, and I will vote for him to get into the Hall of Fame. 2-0. Oh. He had five <laughs> picks. So if they can get five picks every game, he'll go. Oh, he's going to have a great career. Here you go. TJ. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.